Hey, 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 what's going on? Oh my god, where have I been? Ugh. Oh man, I'm recording this um, on my new second hand phone. Got a little while ago, Samsung, Samsung S10. Um, I'm using the mic in the phone because my little road um, I need an adapter cable worked fine with my s9 I just plugged it in hey Bob's your uncle uh, but this one Bob is not my uncle and so yeah but I thought I, I just wanted to get this done and get it out there because I know it's been a long time between the proverbial drinks here at one foot of books I am Shard welcome back been about I don't know, seven or eight months um, I just kind of dropped off as you are wont to do in this world of YouTube uh, if you just do I, I did I did I'm sorry I'm still in the same place not much has changed really well stuff has changed but not much um, uh, but I don't know I'm gonna tell you my life story we're not here for that we're here to discuss one foot of books I think this is episode, I don't even know, I've even looked back in my previous videos to get the, the number, the episode number, so I'm sorry about that. Um, it is October, late October, 2024, year of our Lord, whatever that means, <laughs> ah! and um, it's, a, it's, it's an overcast, dreary spring day here in the Blue Mountains in Sydney. I hope the sound is okay. Um, anyway, if not, I can reshoot with this stack. Um, we'll just move on to the next one once I get my little adapter cable. Thank you, technology gods. Alright, so I went to a book sale, um, a few weeks back. Got a stack of books. Got it. They, one of those sales where they're like, $10 a bag. I'm just like, yeah, I'll take one. <laughs> I know how to fill up a bag at one of those bad boys. I'll tell you that much. And I got this and a few more. Um, so yeah, welcome to episode of One Foot of Books, uh, the show where I just go through, uh, my book collection and, um, show you what I've got, a bit of show and tell, um, yeah. So this is, um, from a book sale from a couple of weeks ago, um, up here in the Blue Mountains. I do try to get out and um, go to these book sales. Um, oh, actually, this one isn't from the book sale. <laughs> what a great way to start. Eight months off. Still hasn't got a shit right, you know? Uh, this is The Every by David Eggers. I've never read any of David Eggers' books. Um, and this is like the follow-up to The Circle, but I don't think it's like a direct sequel. Um, I, I, I don't think you need to read The Circle to read this. But I picked it up. Um, God, where did I get it? I got it at a Salvo's or a Vinnie's. We went on a road trip um, in the school holidays. Where did I get it? Um, Anyway, somewhere down south, um, I got this. It sounds really cool. Uh, it sounds like some um, like a story I want to read. It sounds like some thoughts I've been mulling over. Um, it's um, about a person when the world's largest search engine slash social media company merges with the planet's dominant e-commerce site to create the richest and most dangerous and, oddly enough, most beloved monopoly ever, ever known. The Every. Um, and it's about um, uh, some, some characters. Um, I'm about 23 pages in, magic number. Uh, and one is trying to get into the, to working into the every, uh, to bring it down from the inside. I wonder how that will work out. And um, that's about as far as I've gotten. Hey, Vegas. If you've read any of this other stuff, let me know. I've got one of those other books. Um, what is the what or something about the brothers who um, go across mm, kid mess. Um, go across Africa? Um, yeah, um, but I haven't read it. 
I haven't read that either. Yeah. Um, I found this at the book sale. Fiesta. Also known as The Sun Also Rises. Ernest Hemingway. I don't know if I've got a copy of this book already. I don't think I do, but um, I just love the cover. Look at that cover. Ah, oh, amazing. Good old uh, pan cover, pan books. This is from 1900. And when is this in print? From 1971, the year. That's when this is from. It's older than me. It's probably older than a lot of you. If it's not older than you, um, you're old. <laughs> I'm looking at my non-existent producer. What? What is the? What? What are you giving me to work with here? Uh, you yeah, gotta love a bit of Hemingway. Uh, one of my favourite stories of his is the snows of Kilimanjaro. Oh my god. Chef's Kiss of a short story, that one. Um, haven't read that, haven't ever read it. Um, I kind of go uh, in and out, up and down with Hemingway. Um, I'm either in a Hemingway phase or I'm not. I, it's not someone I can really just pick up and, and read casually. Um, yeah, I've read most of his short stories and a few of his books. But yeah, I haven't read The Sun Also Rises. What do you think? I don't know. I just like the cover. I thought that was really cool. Another one from the book sale. Uh, the Gothic Tales of the Marquis de Sade. De Sade. De Sade. De Sadism. De Sade. I don't know how to say it. Um, this is a Picador edition from... Looks like it's never been read. Uh, this is from 1990. And I don't know when I'm going to read it either. I just saw it and I'm just like, um, yes, I want to read some Gothic Tales by the Marquis. And... I don't know when I'm going to read that, um, but yeah, I've never read any of his stuff, um, and I'm keen to start, and this is like the short stuff, so, hey, why not? Why not, man, the self-made cuckold? It's the last story. <laughs> the horse chestnut flower. Ugh. Room for two. That's <laughs> only three pages long. Uh, the husband who played priest. These just sound like stuff from P-Hub. Um, Room for Two. Uh, the Chastised Husband. Florville and Corval. Um, um, yeah, well, I'll give that a read. If you read any Sard, Desard, Desade. Just tell me how, how do I say the last name? Desade? Sadism? Um, Desard? Um, Dylan on Dylan, a collection of uh, Bob Dylan interviews. Uh, this is a Hodder and Staunton edition. Um, I think it's from the mid 90s. Sorry, mid 2000s, 2006. Um, I love me a bit of Bob Dylan, and I saw this, I was just like, yes, yes, I do want to read um, his interviews from the years and. Um, there was one in here with Studs Terkel, who is a, a, I'm a big fan of Studs Terkel, I love that guy. Um, but he's further down in the stack too. So, and then kind of lead, you know, leads into that, well, kind of matches with this. But anyway, uh, Dylan on Dylan, a bunch of his interviews uh, from like the 60s to the early 2000s. And I love reading his interviews because you don't really... I don't know what you can't not be careful about saying stuff about Bob Dylan because um, he is this he's like the original chameleon I talk about Madonna oh Madonna reinvent just we used to I'm, I'm showing my age here Madonna is a chameleon she re reinvents herself all the time and so dude Dylan did it heaps earlier and all the time <laughs> like like between words he would change <laughs> become completely different and I love that about him um, yeah I think I'll have to kind of before I wax philosophical more on Bob Dylan I'll probably have to think about it more or else I'll just be vomiting word files but I like Bob Dylan and I'm keen to read that um, A Record of Meetings by P.D. Um 
Ospensky was one of the uh, chief, uh, I shouldn't call him chief, one of the leading um, devotees of George Ivanovich Gurdjieff. If you haven't heard of Gurdjieff, um, go down a little rabbit hole today. A very interesting dude. Um, and Ospensky, um, he kind of, he didn't popularize him, but Gurdjieff was deliberately obtuse with what he was doing. And he didn't um, put out much stuff. He only did a few books, but Ospensky collected his um, transcriptions from his meetings and other stuff like that, interviews, and um, he put them all in books. And uh, this is one of them, a record of meetings. Um, plus also Ospensky, through his teachings with Gajif, um, his studies and, and other stuff too, because he's, he's just he had his fingers in many alternate spiritual pies back in the late 1800s, early 2000, uh, 19, um, early 20th century. And uh, yeah, he wrote a bunch of stuff. He wrote heaps more than Gajif ever did. Um, and but you know, you see his books around every once in a while. Uh, do yourself a favor, pick them up. They're, they're a lot easier to read than Gajif. He puts his ideas and Gajeev's ideas forward a lot clearer than Gajeev did because Gajeev was just like this, I don't know, man, he's, yeah, he's a weird, interesting fellow. And um, just, he didn't want to make things easy for people. Uh, he thought everyone had it too easy, we're kind of robots and we need to be shaken out of this sleep that he thought we were in as a species. Um, Ospensky, um, yeah, I don't want to put words in his mouth or anything, but Ospensky, Ospens, Ospensky simplified a lot of Gajeev stuff and put them in book form and, um, yeah, they're a lot easier to think and to digest and they, um, there's more of them around and, um, yeah, yeah, I like Ospensky stuff too. He kind of built on and elaborated and, and worked from the Gajeev start point. Um, but yeah, cool. Um, and this one's got some scribbles in it. It's got someone's email address. Um, uh, looks like it's got the website of the Gajeev Society. I think they're still operating. Um, in Australia, I went to one years ago and like well, most things, Australia, um, any kind of groups kind of made up of old white people. I'm sorry. Uh, most most of them are, and I went to the Gajeev Society, and it was a bunch of old white people. And I was, I was in my twenties, and I was like, "Oh man, is this Gajeev surviving? You know, <laughs> how's your Gajeev Society going? Let me know if you're full of young people and excited, and you're working from, you're doing the work, the work. Uh, let me know. Um, this is this looks like a discounted version. Um, judging by that yellow sticker they used to see in like QDB bookshops and stuff like that. This is from 1992 and it's a collection of um, Al Spensky's writing between uh, 1930 and 1947. Next up on the stack. Spiders. It's spider season here. Um, little ones, small ones, they're everywhere. Uh, David Graeber. Debt. The first 5,000 years. Uh, David Graeber, he died a few years ago. Um, I've read a bit of his book, Bullshit Jobs. That was awesome. I remember reading the article when it first came out. And I was just like, wow. Goosebumps. Goosebumps, man. And um, I picked up Bullshit Jobs uh, probably about a year ago. And I, I dipped into it here and there. And then I saw this big hardcover copy of Debt, The First 5,000 Years, and it's a history of debt. And, um, yeah, I want to read this. I don't know if I ever will, though. Um, but I'm going to try. I'll try. We aim to try. Don't we? Do or do not? There is no try? I don't know. Shut up, internal Yoda. Um, but, yeah, just a, a history. Spider egg? I don't know. History of debt. Um, yeah, let's have a look at the blurb. Every economics textbook says the same thing. Money was invented to replace 
onerous and complicated barter systems to relieve ancient people from having to haul their goods to market. The problem with this version of history, there's not a shred of evidence to support it. Here, anthropologist David Graeber presents a stunning reversal of conventional wisdom. He shows that for more than 5,000 years, since the beginnings of the first agrarian empires, humans have used elaborate credit systems to buy and sell goods. That is, long before the invention of coins or cash. It is this era, Graeber argues, that we also first encounter a society divided into debtors and creditors. Yes, I like that. This is um, I, I like this cover. The cover's good. Um, I don't think anyone's read it. I can't see any dog-eared pages. It's from 2011. Yeah, I'll read that one day. Um, people who know me, and there's not many of those, um, know that I'm a big film buff. And I saw this at the book sale. David Cronenberg's first fiction book, Consumed. David Cronenberg, um, I, I've had a long history with Cronenberg's films. I remember seeing um, The Fly back in the 80s. Uh, Videodrome, I probably watched that a little bit too young on the Sunday Night Horrors one uh, week in New Zealand when I was growing up. They had this thing called the... It was the Sunday Night Horrors and then it was the Friday Night Horrors and they played horror movies at like 11 o'clock or midnight at night. And um, that had people like various New Zealand celebrities introduced them. One of them was the former, the former New Zealand Prime Minister, Robert Muldoon, affectionately known as Piggy. Um, and he used to dress up as Dracula and stuff and introduce horror movies. Um, and so that's where my love affair with David Cronenberg's body horror stuff um, started. And I, I've, I've watched, have I, no, I've watched all his movies. There's a couple of his early 1970s ones I haven't seen. Um, but man, um, if his movies or anything, if his books are anything like his movies, I am on board. Um, it sounds pretty cool. Um, stylish, stylish and tech obsessed. Naomi and Nathan are lovers and competitors, nomadic freelancers in pursuit of sensation and depravity in the social media age. They encounter each other only in airport hotels and browser windows. Uh, yeah, anyway, it's his first book. It was published 2014. And from this blurb, it already sounds a little dated. I don't know. Sorry, um, Mr. Cronenberg. Um, because, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Just from the blurb. I just, I'm just like, wow. Well, it's 10 years old now. Um, you know, stuff moves so fast now. But I'll watch this. Uh, I'll well, I'll read this. I was just looking at the back. It's got a little bio and it's got, oh, Maps of the Stars. I haven't seen that. I'll, I'll watch that. No, no I'm going to read this. I will, I will read that book, Consumed, David Cronenberg. Uh, the Happiness Trap. I've talked about this before. I got this to send to my brother. Ah, uh, yes. Studs Turkle. Ah, oh, I love this guy. And they all sang. Uh, there is the man, Studs. He was a writer, um, actor, um, all sorts of stuff. Very interesting guy. And um, he was... I've, I've read one of his other books called Working, where he goes around and, and interviews just blue-collar, white-collar people uh, from all walks of life in the, I think it was the 60s, 50s and 60s in America, and just talks to them about their jobs. And it's amazing. And I love that book. Um, some of it still sticks with me. Um, the interview he has with, um, I think, uh, the widow of a bus driver, of a... Of a african-american bus driver and i was just oh man that is beautiful um and i got this i was having a look through it at the book sale and i was like i saw there was an interview with bob dylan in here and a bunch of old timies as well um yeah so just from like spirituals blues folk rock you got um tommy dorsey uh mahalia jackson big bill brosny uh sorry brunzy 
Yeah, I want to say Brosny. I don't know why. Uh, Bob Dylan, Woody Guthrie, Peter Seeger, Pete Seeger, Janis Joplin. You got Alan Lomax. Oh, dude, that guy. Respect Alan Lomax. Um, Dizzy Gillespie, Betty Carter, and it's just just studs interviewing them. And he's a great interviewer, and um, he gets really cool stuff out of people. Um, he's one of the many talents. Uh, and they all sang Studs Joplin. Well, when is this from? This is a hardcover edition, but it was originally published. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so this this one came out in 2005. Some of the interviews are coming from the 50s. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll read that. Love a bit of Studs. Um, I found this at the Salvos in Penrith um, the other day on a Saturday. Commentaries on living um, from the notebooks of Jiddu Krishnamurti. Um, I love me a bit of Krishnamurti. I picked up my first Krishnamurti book when I was 19. I found it in a secondhand bookshop in Whangarei in New Zealand. It's called The Only Revolution. And it was the first time I had read something like that. And I picked up a few of his other books over the years. I've got quite a collection now of, of Krishnamurti stuff. Um, I don't know if it's done me good or bad. <laughs> because he's just... He's like Shiva the Destroyer when it comes to... Man, almost anything. Um, he will pick apart and tear up any kind of concept, opinion, belief that someone comes to him with. And I love that about him. And he's contradictory and he's very interesting and very insightful. His history alone is amazing. Like his personal history of like where he came from. Um, he was um, kind of singled out by the theosophists and was going to be trained up to be the 21st century Jesus Christ of theosophy and he's just like nah <laughs> and he just went out and started doing talks and writing books and most of the, most of his books are just collections of his um, meetings um, but these are from his notebooks um, hardcover still got the dust jacket oh I love the old dust jacket and this one is from um, 1969. I do have, um, where is it? Uh, second series. So I've got the commentaries on living second book. And I think, um, I think this is the first one. And, um, yeah, if you haven't gotten into Krishnamurti or you don't know who the guy is, um, look him up online, but even better find yourself one of his books. One of his many books. Freedom from the Known is one of my personal favorites. Um, but anything, any of his commentaries. Um, there's a Krishnamurti reader. Um, I've got a copy of it somewhere. I can't remember what it's called. But there's a reader out that's just, a, you know, about 350 pages. Just a, a, his best of, maybe. Um, but yeah, I picked that up. Uh, that was two bucks. Yeah. yeah. Still got a dust jacket on it, man. I don't know if anyone's ever read this. Um, it's, it's still fine. Um, but he talks about all sorts of stuff. So, like, thought and love. Um, let's read thought and love. Uh, let's read... No, no, it's too long. No, oh, it's the same thing. Gossip and worry, page 13. Let's have a look, see, eh? Um, gossip and worry. How oddly similar are gossip and worry? They are both the outcome of a restless, of a restless mind. A restless mind must have a changing variety of expressions and actions. It must be occupied. It must have ever increasing sensations, passing interests, and gossip contains the elements of all these. Gossip is the very antithesis of intensity and earnestness. To talk about another pleasantly or viciously is an escape from oneself. An escape is the cause of restlessness. Escape in its very nature is restless. Concern over the affairs of others seems to occupy most people. 
and this concern shows itself in the reading of innumerable magazines and newspapers with their gossip columns, their accounts of murders, divorces, and so on. As we are concerned with what others, others, others think of us, so we are anxious to know all about them, and from this arise the crude and subtle forms of snobbishness and the worship of authority. Thus we become more and more externalized and inwardly empty. The more externalized we are, the more sensations and distractions there must be. And this gives rise to a mind that is never quiet, that is not capable of deep search and discovery. Love you, Krishnamurti, wherever you may be. And last on the stack today, um, No Direction Home, Bob Dylan. Got this at the book sale again. I've started reading it. I'm loving it. Robert Shelton. Um, I don't know if you'd call him the Bob Dylan biographer. <clears throat> uh, this isn't a biography, apparently. Um, and uh, the, na uh, the name of it is, um, of course, that fantastic Scorsese doco about Bob Dylan's early years, uh, No Direction Home which is one of my favourite documentaries of all time. If you haven't seen it, watch it. Uh, three and a half hours of just pure Bob gold. Uh, this is great. Um, I've just started it over the weekend. I'm about, uh, you know, 60 pages in. And it, it's just, I'm up, I'm just reading about Bob growing up in Hibbing, Minnesota. And, you know, I've been a Bob Dylan fan for a long time. And it's, 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 it's it's strange um, thinking that he came from somewhere, <laughs> you know, that he, he was born and he grew up before he became Bob Dylan. He was this other, he, he was, he was, he was himself, but you know, it's just this weird, he came from somewhere and it's awesome reading about um, where he came from so far, this like small city in Minnesota, like middle of nowhere, middle of a Minnesota nowhere and and he came from somewhere he came from this place and it's just yeah uh, I'm digging it I'm, I'm liking this book so far um Robert Shelton is, is pretty is, he's a really good writer he's a good interviewer he gets in there he kind of in, in, uh, injects himself into the the book a little bit as well um but yeah I'm, I'm liking this this is a um this copy I think this is a early, no, this is an uh, 1987 edition. I think it's been revised since then or added to or something. But anyway, uh, I'm liking this so far, very much so. No Direction Home, Bob Dylan. That's one foot of books today. I hope the sound has been okay. Like I say, my external mic um, wasn't working with this phone, my new old phone. Um, but I, I'll fix that up for next week's video. I'm going to be uploading every Tuesday. I'm going to be trying really hard to because I just want to get like the, a form of a semblance of consistency in my content output as well as other areas of my life because I'm not very consistent. I don't know if you are. Um, if you are, send me some tips, some tricks, some life hacks. Uh, send me some cheat sheets. I don't know. Um, I'm always after that stuff. Um, kid mess. Uh, yeah, all right, cool. Uh, thanks for watching One Foot of Books episode. <laughs> um, I'll be back next week. Um, a little bit more organized, hopefully. At least I'll know the episode number. Thanks, I'm Shad. Have a great week. I'll see you next